Hello everyone, we have a 2023 Polestar 2 that needs a EFAD, electric front axle drive unit. We're going to do that today, I'm going to show you how to do it. The vehicle here has 97,000 miles on it. It's a lot of miles for a two year old vehicle. But, motor sits down underneath this so we're going to need to take the subframe out and I have to de-energize the vehicle here and I'm going to show you guys how to do this. I want you to start by removing the 12 volt battery. Remove these clips for the harness here for the high voltage cables to the inverter. After removing the clips here, I want you to remove this battery tray right here. Remove these clips and harness here and put it to the side. Take the wheels and these bottom covers off. Now that the covers and tires are off the vehicle, you're gonna wanna come to this area up here and release these quick connects and drop the coolant in the vehicle. While the coolant's draining, I want to remove the fender liner on this side and the other side. So coming to the back of the subframe here, you have that 10 millimeter there that holds this bracket for the brake lines. And then you have this 10 millimeter that holds the coolant lines down with the bracket there. You're going to want to pull that out. And then these four 8 millimeters that are holding this bracket here, you're going to want to pull those out. Remove these two nuts. Remove this plug. Remove this clamp here on the back side of this. Here you have a coolant tube that you're going to want to disconnect here with this quick disconnect. You're going to want to pull the clip here and pull this coolant line off. We're going to now come over to this valve here and behind these coolant hoses there's a clip that's holding this connector here. Pull this clip and remove this hose from this valve. Next, we're going to want to come over to that valve and take this 10 millimeter nut off, this 10 millimeter nut off, and then come behind and remove this clip here that's holding this zip tie on. We're now going to remove the axles for the vehicle in the front. And to do that, you're going to want to start by taking this 13 millimeter lock bolt down. Next, you're going to want to take this 15 millimeter lock bolt down for the ball joint on the lower. You're going to want to decompress the springs so that you can get the control arm out. You're going to want to use this special tool to decompress the springs. To remove this axle, you're going to want to stick your special tool in between here and hit that with the bottom of the hammer. Remove the sway bar link and Remove the tie rod. Next, on the right hand side of the vehicle here underneath, you're going to want to take this plug off, this plug off, this clip off, and back here, this plug right here. Next, you're going to want to come over and take this 8 millimeter bolt out and this 8 millimeter bolt out. Remove this hose clamp and separate the hose. Next you're going to want to come over to the driver's side of the vehicle, take this 8 millimeter bolt out, take this plug off here and remove the clip back here that's holding the wiring harness. Next, you're going to want to come to the driver's side again and you're going to want to take that 10 millimeter ground wire off. On this coolant pump here, you're going to want to remove the 8 millimeters and move the part to the side. Next, you're going to want to remove 
with the compressor bolts, five millimeter Allen wrench. And there's two on the top side, you're gonna have to take those off also. Remove the compressor bolt here and here. Next, you're gonna wanna remove this level sensor with a 10 millimeter bolt underneath. And you're gonna also want to remove the plug. Next, you wanna come under the vehicle and take this 15 millimeter bolt out of this dog bone motor mount. And then off this motor mount here, you're gonna to wanna to take this 15 millimeter also. After removing those bolts, as you see, the motor will move around a little bit. Next, you're gonna zip tie the steering wheel to the turn signal so that the steering wheel stays in place. And you're gonna to wanna to come down here to the steering column. You're gonna to wanna to remove this 10 millimeter locking bolt and pull back on the steering column. Next, remove the crash bar. It's four bolts to remove the crash bar. The transmission jack, because you're gonna take out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight subframe bolts. Now that the subframe's out, you're gonna to wanna to remove these four T25s so that you can remove these cables here. On the back of the cables, you're gonna to wanna to remove this eight millimeter and this eight millimeter. On the back side of the motor, you're gonna to wanna to remove this coolant line here and let it drain. Next, you're gonna to wanna to remove this eight millimeter bolt and then there's one atop eight millimeter bolt like this to hold this bracket. So we use a special table to pull the front motor out of this vehicle. I have a special clamp for the motor that hooks to the table and bolts to the table. I'll show you how it hooks to the motor next. Now that the vehicle is disassembled, it's time to pull the motor out. You're gonna wanna take this 15 millimeter bolt Pull this bracket back here and that 15 millimeter bolt and the motor will be released. All right, keep going all the way up. And that's how you pull a front EFAT out of a Polestar 2. Pretty cool, huh? Half a day to get it out, right? With the motor out now, I'm gonna have to switch the mounts over to the new motor, this hose, the three phase cables, and the bracket here. This bracket on the side. And also this bracket here. And the new motor. Let's open it up and check it out. Come specially wrapped here. Here's the new motor with everything swapped. Time to go back in. Now that the motor's back in, I want you to install everything that you took apart the same way that you took it apart, and we'll go to the next step. Now that the vehicle's assembled, we're gonna turn around and do a coolant fill. So I want you to fill the coolant up. Hook a battery charger or maintainer to the battery and hook it to Vita or your diagnostic computer. Now that I have Vita here, you're going to turn around and erase all the DTCs on the vehicle. It takes a moment here. And we're going to update. 
So it says here IHFA motor position sensor circuit system programming failures. It's missing the calibration and generate position sensor not learned. So what we have to do is after doing a coolant fill, which it bleeds the system for the coolant, we're going to program the IHFA. Now that we've cleared the DTCs, we're going to do a coolant fill here. And to do that, I want you to go to components. I want you to type in ECM, which is engine control module, and I'll highlight the engine control module. And I want you to go to fill and bleed coolant system. Make sure you read all this and tell them that you understand. It's pretty much telling you that you're going to bleed the cooling system here. Make sure that your coolant is filled. And make sure that you fill your expansion tank like I was saying. And then I want you to start the coolant bleed. This takes 15, it takes 10 to 15 minutes, but I have yet to see one that doesn't take 15 minutes. So when this counter hits about 15 minutes, I'll be back. I can hear the pumps running and I'm checking the coolant level just to make sure that it's at its maximum level. So under components here, I want you to go to IH FA, which is an inverter high voltage front axle, and I want you to highlight that, and we're going to calibrate the electric front drive axle, and we're going to reset the calibration, We're going to do a stationary calibration. We're going to set the vehicle to usage mode active. And we're going to start the stationary calibration here. Calibration is complete. We're going to go back and we're going to do a rotational calibration. In a stationary calibration here, it says the vehicle is in usage mode driving and the motor speed is between 200 and 3000 RPMs. It says to click to start calibration to allow the calibration to automatically start when preconditions are fulfilled. Drive the vehicle on the road. The procedure should takes about 12 to 15 seconds to run. So we're going to go take the vehicle for a ride, and we're going to start the calibration. Drive the vehicle here at about 10 miles an hour, and then as soon as you hit the 10 miles an hour, you're going to hear a shutter, which will be a calibration complete on the vehicle. After this, I want you to close this out. I want you to go to components here. I want you to go to DTCs. I now want you to erase all the DTCs before you go to a test drive. As you see, we have no IHFA codes anymore or calibration codes. We did our job. It's time to go for a test drive and confirm that the vehicle drive is good. I appreciate you watching. Thanks for watching Fully Charged Zone. Until the next time. If you liked the video, Please like and subscribe.